Hello and welcome back to Cooking by Zoe. This tutorial is on how I make baked sushi or sushi bake. Baked sushi is like a casserole version of sushi. No rolling is involved and it can be baked or non-baked. Everything is cooked, although you can definitely add raw protein and not bake it. It's really good. It's really simple to make, so continue watching and I'll show you guys how to make this. These are all the ingredients that I'll be using for today's recipe. Sriracha, Kewpie mayo, which is a Japanese mayo, seaweed, this is the type I'm using, medium grain white rice, this capelin roe, rice vinegar, frikake or frikake, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, imitation crab, cream cheese, salt, salmon, shrimp, and this unagi sushi sauce. To begin, rinse your white rice until the water runs clear, then steam it or cook in the rice cooker. I'm steaming my rice today. Next, you'll want to cook all of your raw protein. So I'm going to be cooking my shrimp and the salmon, and I'm just pan frying these in olive oil, and I'm adding a pinch of salt and black pepper to both. For the imitation crab, that's already pre-cooked, ready to eat, so you don't need to cook that. If you want to add any other seasoning to your protein, you definitely can. I'm just sticking with salt and black pepper, and I'm not gonna go into detail on how I cook these. They're just pretty much pan fry until they're cooked. Once your protein are cooked, you'll want to remove them from the heat, and you'll want to dice them into pieces. For the shrimp, I'm dicing. I'm not mincing them, but just giving it a really nice dice. And then for the salmon, I'm just gonna do the same thing as well. Once done dicing your protein, place that into a large bowl for mixing with the rest of the protein in the sauces. This is the type of imitation crab I'll be using today. I'm not using the entire bag, just half, so there is a total of eight sticks that I'm using. You'll want to either peel or use a fork or knife, shred these, and then cut the strips into smaller bite-sized pieces. The approximate amount of this imitation crab is about one and a half cup. You can add more or less of all of these protein of your choice. You can also add other type of proteins if you would like as well. For the salmon, we are actually not going to knead the skin of the salmon, so I'm going to peel the skin off and then I'm going to slice the salmon into smaller pieces. Here's all of the protein that I'll be using, and next I'm going to add all the seasoning to this. First, I'm going to add a pinch of salt, and then I'm going to add one third cup of Kewpie mayo. If you can't find this type of mayo, you can use regular mayo. You can add more or less and adjust all of these ingredients to your preference. Next, I'm going to add in one tablespoon of sriracha sauce. If you like it a little bit more spicier, you can add more less or you can do without. Optional is to add cream cheese or even sour cream. And for the cream cheese, you can add two to three ounce. It goes very well with these protein, but I'm actually not gonna add it today. Next, optional as well is to add this capelin roe into the protein. And these are all the sauce that I'll be adding to the filling and just give this a really good mix. And I actually like to go in with my hands and kind of squeeze these together, but it's not necessary. You don't really have to do this part. To 
to assemble our sushi casserole, we're going to add in three cups of cooked white medium grain rice. And to this, we're going to add in one tablespoon of rice vinegar and a pinch of salt. If you like, you can also add sesame oil. Mix these together, but be gentle and avoid breaking your grain of rice. The size of my pan is eight and a half by eight and a half. So if you're using a smaller or larger pan, you may need to add a little bit more or less of rice. Some people like the layer of the rice to be thin, some like it thicker. So it's really based on your preference. Add more or less on what you like and adjust the rice vinegar amount. Next, using your spatula, press the rice down onto the pan so that you get an evenly layer of the rice. Continue pressing down the rice until you get a nice evenly layer. To the top of this rice, I'm going to sprinkle some furikake or furikake, I'm not sure on how to pronounce this, over the rice. Add more or less based on your preference. On top of this layer, we're going to add in our protein that we mix with all the sauces from earlier. And you'll want to just go ahead and place this all over the top and spread them around and you'll repeat that same process that we did earlier by using your spatula and pressing down on these protein. That way you have a nice layer, a nicely even layer. Okay, so this is perfectly what we want. Lastly, on top of this layer, we're going to add in all the sauces and extra toppings for looks and taste. I'm adding in Kewpai mayo, the unagi sauce, um, sriracha, and some capelin roll, and some sprinkle other furikake. You'll notice that in the video, I did not show adding the sriracha sauce because I actually forgot until after I have placed my pan into the oven. So I took it back out and added the sriracha. So that part's not added in this video. And sriracha is optional as some people don't um, like too much of it or can't take the uh, spice of it. So that's completely optional. You'll want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and what I like to do is bake this for about 20 minutes and then once 20 minutes is up, remove it from the heat and let it cool just briefly before serving. Here is the finished product of my baked sushi. Very delicious. So this is how I eat sushi bake using the seaweed. I take a piece of the seaweed and then using a spoon, grab as much as you like. I usually do about one and a half to two teaspoon of the baked sushi. And I place that on top of the seaweed and then just eat it that way. Well, I hope you all found this tutorial helpful and we'll give this recipe a try. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.